I'm Rantasmo, and Nightmare on Elm Street 2 needs more gay. I find that there are two main types of 80s slasher movie villains. There's the strong silent type, hulking masked killers like Jason and Michael Myers, who just sort of stand around menacingly when they're not murdering teenagers. And then there are the class clowns of slashers, the ones who can't make a kill without making a wisecrack about it first. Like Chucky from Child's Play, the Leprechaun from Leprechaun, and probably the most iconic, Freddy Krueger from the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. One of which has the unique distinction of being one of the gayest mainstream horror movies ever made. I very briefly touched on Nightmare on Elm Street 2 Freddy's Revenge a long time ago, but since its queerer aspects are the subject of an upcoming documentary entitled Scream Queen, this seems like the perfect time to revisit it. At first glance, Nightmare 2 has a few odd quirks to it, not the least of which is this box of racism crunch. Freddy Krueger kills more people in this movie than any other Nightmare on Elm Street movie, but nearly all of them get killed outside of their dreams while they're awake, and nearly all of them are men. That last part is especially interesting because horror movie victims and their deaths are so often sexualized, but in fact the only nudity in this movie is dudes butts. Our secondary protagonist, played by Kim Myers, who bears an uncanny resemblance to Meryl Streep, is never killed and pretty consistently has more clothes on than any other character. Nobody in this movie is more sexualized than Jesse, the main character, played by Mark Patton. For most of the movie, Jesse takes on the role that would normally be filled by a female character. He's constantly in his underwear, dripping with sweat, yet he ultimately comes across as, well, virginal. But Jesse stops short of qualifying as a true final girl. In fact, he's both victim and monster, becoming gradually possessed by Freddy and enabling his killing spree in the real world. In relation to Jesse, Freddy very much comes across as a sexual predator, and that's consistent in the dialogue too. I need you, Jesse. He's inside me, and he wants to take me again! Which brings us to something that's difficult to ignore just how strongly Jesse himself reads as queer. That's certainly helped by the fact that Mark Patton is gay, but again it comes across in the dialogue and in the plot. When Jesse is just about to have sex with Meryl Streep, which let's be honest, if I had to have sex with a woman, mm, Jesse fails to perform and runs to his hunky classmate Grady instead. Something is trying to get inside my body. Yeah, and she's female and she's waiting for you in the cabana. And you want to sleep with me. And just in case you like your subtext with a little less sub, and a little more dom, there's Coach Schneider, an iron-fisted gym teacher who hangs out in gay bars, and ends up naked and spanked to death by flying towels. Incidentally, most of the cast and crew were apparently totally oblivious to the idea that there might be anything gay about any of this which is frankly impressive. To the rest of us, Nightmare 2's queer subtext is inescapable, and it was, to a certain extent, intentional. Though I'm not sure its underlying message can necessarily be called gay positive. You'll notice that Jesse frequently characterizes Freddy as something trapped inside of him, struggling to break free. And in the end, that's exactly what happens. Though some have interpreted Freddy as representing the ugliness of self-hatred or internalized homophobia, interviews with the screenwriter David Chaskin indicate that he may have intended for the movie to play to the homophobia of its audience. One could easily argue that Freddy represents gayness itself, a horror that is ultimately defeated by the power of a heterosexual kiss. It's also possible that Jesse is bisexual but suppressing his attraction to men. Though if Freddy does represent that part of him, it does ultimately resurface. As it is wont to do. Whether its gay undertones and overtones came about thanks to happenstance or by some grand design, there's a good reason why Nightmare 2 has developed such a strong cult following among LGBT horror fans. In a genre where queerness and sexual ambiguity are often villainized, there's something to be said about a movie from the 1980s where the effeminate sissy is not just a good guy, but the lead protagonist. I would have preferred a better movie, but I can appreciate the film for what it is. 
A Beautiful Nightmare with a Screaming Queen. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you like this video and you want to hear more about Nightmare 2, be sure to check out this video by my buddy Matt Baum. Bye!